So let's talk about the current state of Wrenchboard. So I got closed beta access to Wrenchboard now a couple of weeks ago, and I decided not to do a video on it back then, only because when I jumped in, I wasn't immediately drawn to the game. I didn't really like the physics and nothing about it really screamed at me that it was going to be the next sim title that would kind of take over the genre and people would migrate to away from the likes of ACC and iRacing. Now since then they've made incremental updates to the beta version and I did jump in a couple of days ago and give the game another shot because it's been a while since I've been in there and I wanted to see what was happening with the beta. Now I did change some settings on my Fanatec V2.5 wheelbase also and since then it's been a night and day difference in the driving experience. And I want to go through that because I'm now excited for Wrenchboard as the current experience I'm getting in game really brings it up to a level that I feel the likes of ACC and iRacing are currently at. Now the physics, the force feedback currently feels very, very like Aura Factor 2. That's the only way I can describe it. If you're familiar with Aura Factor 2 physics, it's kind of renowned in sim racing circles for having really, really good car physics and just a general feel of the car when you're driving it. I'm a huge fan. It's a sim that I still drive quite a lot in my own time but now Wrenchport has kind of replaced that in my free time and although in the closed beta I only have access to a few cars and tracks obviously it still replaced my time in or factor 2 whenever I'm driving on the rig in my own personal time. Now I don't want to go into how the game looks we can all see it looks fantastic built on a brand new Unreal Engine 5 it's going to look good. My only concern with it is I think it's going to be quite difficult for a lot of people to run the game, especially in multiplayer. So I'm running on a single screen setup with a 3080 Ti, so not the best graphics card out there, but my PC certainly packs a punch. And even just single player when I'm playing in my own time, I still struggle to get above 80 FPS in most areas of most tracks. Now that is a concern. Now bear in mind I am running it at 100% graphics, everything epic, because I want to see obviously how it runs with everything maxed out. But that is a slight concern. When you think about coming into multiplayer lobbies, you may see where we might run into issues down the line with the performance and how our PCs handle it. So that is something that I want to keep an eye on. But of course, as of yet, we don't really know how they're going to optimize the game moving forward. But that is something that I did note. So let's now talk and touch base back to the force feedback model within Wrenchboard. So as I said, it feels very Aura Factor 2-esque. The car feels connected to the ground. You can feel it when you're gaining or losing grip as you navigate through the corners on the circuits. And just in general, the curbs, the bumps have been updated now in the newer versions of the beta release. And it does feel a lot more natural. And just the driving experience as a whole is really, really fun. So I'm super excited to see where they take it. I think it's only going to get better and better. Now, in terms of brand new content for Wrenchboard, I did jump back onto the Wrenchboard Instagram the other day and had a look through and was very excited to see that they're now bringing the Porsche hypercar into the game as well, along with Goodwood Circuit. It's nice to see that they're branching away from GT3, that they're not trying to do exactly what other sims are doing. Why would everyone move from these sims that they already play like iRacing and ACC to move to just another sim that does the very same thing but may look a little bit better? So it's nice to see that they're branching out and trying to bring in more and more diverse cars. If that's going to be where Wrenchboard is going, we're going to have multi-class racing. Maybe that might be a thorn in iRacing's side, which leads me into my next point, and that's where does Wrenchboard fit in? And to be honest, I can't answer that, and I don't think you can either, but it's very clear that will it replace iRacing? No way. Absolutely not. iRacing has been there for so long, and even though its model is archaic, it's expensive, it's here to stay. iRacing is going to be here for a very, very long time. ACC, I feel, may burn out in the next few years, but for the moment, at least, GT3 is where ACC is dominating right now, alongside iRacing. The likes of Race Room, or Factor 2, AMS2, they're kind of on the sidelines, so the danger is that Wrenchport is basically going to just join them. So pricing model wise, what I think they're going to do is follow the same route as Race Room. Now, if you're familiar with Race Room, they do offer a base package, which is for free. You can download the game and get started for absolutely free with a set number of cars and tracks available to free users. They also have online lobbies designated to free users to ensure that they get to experience the online racing also alongside its premium members, which I think is awesome. And I know race room players are a huge fan of that, so I really do think that Wrenchboard is basically going to take that model and just expand on it. Apart from that, with the premium version of the game, then what they're going to do is bring in DLC content because the content at the moment is quite sparse. 
and it doesn't seem to be releasing in any great capacity. By the time they launch, I can't imagine that they'll have a great selection of premium content. So it makes even more sense for it to offer the base game for free and then eventually get people to purchase the DLC content as it expands its premium content moving forward. Let's talk about the online racing experience in Wrenchport. So I have had some online races when the beta first arrived and of course it was fun, always is when you're racing against actual human beings in a sim, especially a new one that's exciting to drive. However, this is where Wrenchport can really own a slice of the sim racing pie. They need to get their online multiplayer correct and what I mean by that more so is ensure that there's a robust ranking system in place by default in the base level game. Now look at iRacing and the reason why most people go for iRacing is because the competitive of this, you've got your SR and your I rating and that system of ranking that's been there from day one and people love it. Look at LFM with ACC, ACC missed out on that opportunity to add such a thing into the base game and now LFM have come along and they're over 100,000 members now. So it's only showing us and it should show Ren Sport as a business as well that the sim racing community wants, needs and loves having robust ranking systems in place. So there you have it, there's my thoughts on the current state of Wrench Board, what I'm excited for and where I think it's heading. But now I'm going to pass the microphone over to you, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Wrench Board. Do you have beat access, have you played it already or are you patiently waiting for one of those keys to be released? Let me know down in the comments below and of course if you enjoyed this video hit that like button and if you haven't already subscribe to the channel for more content coming up very very soon and in the meantime if you want to keep watching my content I suggest this video on screen here right now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.